Hello, so welcome to the Google Classroom main interface. The first step we're going to do once we've logged into Google Classroom is we're going to create a classroom. Think of a classroom as a container to put all your items and bring people together in, much like you do in a normal school environment. We're going to click on the plus arrow. We're going to create a class. The class name, which is required, all the other information is not. We're going to type in English Literature for Year 6. The section, well, we're going to say it's in the Humanities section. The subject is indeed English Lit. And we're going to give it a name, a room, Room 1A. If you're teaching completely virtual, you haven't got to fill this in. Although if this is to supplement a class, a traditional face-to-face -face class, then you may want to put a room into it. Then we're going to click Create. Google Classroom will then go away and formulate that one class and then present it to you. And it'll only take a matter of seconds. Now, as you can see, our English literature class has been created for year six. Let's have a quick look around the interface. So at the top, we've got our heading for our class, English Lit Year 6, it's Humanity section, and you've got a class code. This class code is what can be used to invite students to join your class. There are two ways of doing that, and we'll cover that in a minute. But this class code enables people to join your class should they have this particular code. On the left hand side we have a small calendar for you the instructor and in the student view for also the students. What work is due in soon and you can view all your work as well. This is the stream setting of Google Classroom and with this stream setting think of it as a social media interface for the people within your class. You can collaborate directly with your students on an open basis or on a personal level, and they can collaborate and ask you questions as well in an open forum. So for example, share something with your class. We're the instructor. We're going to say, hello class. And you can select all students or only a few. You can then post that or schedule. That announcement to be made or save it as a draft. We're going to say post to all students. Good stuff, eh? This stream is a way of bringing people together in an interface that is familiar to everybody. Let's go back to the title. As you can see, we've got our class heading, we've got our humanities and our class code, as we mentioned before. You can also select the theme for this particular banner. Now, by clicking on this, you get a list of different themes that Google has put together in an education environment. Of course, it's picked one that is representative of English Lit, um, with a book, glasses, and a quill. Pretty good, really. But you might want to think something a bit more acute to your tastes. For example, this one here, which also has glasses, a newspaper, and a book. Go to English and History, and there may be something a bit more acute from the Google Archives. That one here, for example. So we can select our class theme. Or you can upload a picture that is more relevant to you. It might be a school logo. It might be a class photograph, depending on what year of class you're, you're actually taking. That might add an extra level of personality. And that's by done by clicking Upload Photograph. You can take it from your computer or you can drag something in here from your Google Drive. So next over is classwork. Classwork is where you can create um, items of work your people can work with. Clicking on create, you can create assignments where people can submit items of work to you. That might be a book report, for example. You can create quizzes, multiple choice. Um, quizzes that can be self-moderated. You can then mark them automatically. You can provide answers and you can also set quizzes so that they can be assigned only once. You can also ask your class questions to invoke conversation. 
and publish material. If you've got several classes, you can also reuse posts as well and order all this work by topics. You can access your Google Calendar for this particular class as well and put in relevant dates for people. And also you can look at your class drive, which is a OneDrive or a Google Drive, shall we say. OneDrive would be Office 365. It's a Google Drive for the class, not to be confused with your own personal drive, which you have here. So moving on, people. As mentioned, you can add students into this class. This can be done in several ways. You can issue a code for students to join the class of their own volition. Or what you can do is you can invite individuals. Not only students, but you can also invite other teachers, maybe a supply teacher, or maybe you're in a job share. Let's start off with inviting a teacher. Click the plus. We'll invite our teacher Nicola and click invite. They'll get an invitation then when they log in to join this class and they'll say, you've been invited to join this class. With students, very similar. Click on plus, click on an individual. When they log on to classroom, they'll get an invitation. You've been invited to join this class. Let's take a look at this in action. Let's take a look at joining the class with a code. Let's go to our infrastructure class. Let's get our code. Click on that focus. Makes it larger. We'll copy that. We'll go to a dashboard of a student. We have a student here, Dexter. Dexter's going to be invited into this class. What we're going to do is we're going to collect to the toast at the top. We're going to scroll down. We're going to go to classroom. There it is. No classes here. We're going to make sure our focus is actually on Dexter because it does change around when you're logged on for multiple instances. We're going to add our class, type in the class code, and click join. It will then think about it, go away, interrogate the class database, and there it is. Dexter, who is a student, is now a member of that class. He can also share something, look at the class work and check out his peers as well. In the previous session, we added a new instructor, Nicola, to the class of English Literature, Year 6. So what's it going to look like when she logs on? OK, so here we go. We've got uh, Nicola's dashboard. We're going to scroll down to Classroom. Make sure Nicola's selected. We're into the classroom interface. Now you can see on the left hand side that English Lit is the class and that she's been invited to teach this class. There's an instruction she can then accept or decline. So we're going to say accept. There's a brief pause while Google Classroom gets its act together and we can see straight away that Nicola is here in the stream interface. If you go to people, we can see that. Colonel Collaboration and Nicola are both teachers, and that Dexter O is also a student who's joined the class. Now, here's the important thing. We can see that Caitlin has also been invited, but has not yet logged in. So you can then potentially go and chase up that student. Also from this interface, you can select many different items. You either select individuals, by clicking the checkbox, for example, Dexter, go to actions, you can email that individual, you can remove them from the class, or if they've been particularly unruly, you can mute them so they can't be disruptive in the stream or with other students. That's also access as well for email a student with the three dots on the right hand side. You can also sort these people alphabetically. Checking out marks, when assignments have been created and sent out, you can track them in this section and that will be the topic of another video. So in short, that was a brief overview on how to create a class and a quick view around the interface of Google Classroom. Thanks very much for watching. 
Check back for more videos in the series of Google Classroom, and I'll see you soon.